this life today is not about teaching. It's just making sure you remember the reason and what triggered those kids about celebrating, you know, the importance of them having that moment or knowing that they're special. Because that's the way I see it, it's a way of showing them that they're special. So why am I telling this? All right, so we're going to start why I didn't chose um, a theme for this party that's just teaching it. Everybody's been in Clubhouse, at least by now, I think most of the majority of people, especially everybody that has iPhones. I've been in Clubhouse for like three weeks now. My goodness, it's so addictive. It's like super addictive. And I don't know if it's because it's new or I don't know if that's how the platform is made. But everybody there, basically, it's been sharing and helping each other in a different level. It's like, it's, it's unbelievable. You go into these rooms and sometimes you listen to a story that you always learn something from it. And you do. And um, this week in particular, I was in Clubhouse and I was listening to the story of this lady, right? And uh, it, 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 I think probably everybody that was listening cry. I mean, if didn't cry, got very emotional. She got emotional and she even cried as she was telling her story. So I'm going to tell her story and you're going to understand why um, telling the story is important. And, and I'm going to make a connection of the story that I'm telling to the parties. Okay. And like I said, my daughter is being privileged. Us that have a roof uh, are privileged to be able like a to give our children a little bit more. So like that, if we're able to celebrate, even if it's a party of three, like I said, is important. And let me tell you why. So this lady was telling me, uh, telling, not telling me, she was telling in this room because that's how a clubhouse work. So she was telling the story about her growing up, that she grew up very poor, very poor. And there were days that she, they had nothing to eat, not even flour in the kitchen that she, her mom could make like a, a cornstarch, something with sugar in it for them to eat, nothing. She had nothing to eat. And there were days that were normal for her not to eat and not to have anything. So she looked forward and on a Saturday, she used to, her mom used to pick her up and her, her other brothers and sisters, I guess. I can't remember exactly. And she used to take her to these meetings on Saturdays. It was almost like a missionary thing. I don't know if you remember. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to say it right in English. Say she'll no way. It's, um, I think it's like, it, I, I don't know how to explain it because I was little when I first heard of them. But I believe it's, it's something church related, uh, missionary related. Uh, but basically, she would go to this place where they had the meetings, right? And she was telling, she was always been a curious child and she was very smart uh, by being curious. And, and she said how curiosity took her to a better life in the future and things that she used to do. And um, so she was so hungry. Uh, she was so hungry that day that she went there and she was so smart. She used to sit by the table where they were selling things, like they would sell books, candy, and stuff. Because like I said, I think it's a missionary thing. So basically, they used to give it away. Like every time somebody come in and wanted to donate, uh, buy a chocolate for the, 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 how do you say, the... How do I say? The event, basically. And the person didn't want the chocolate. How many times do you see kids selling chocolate outside because they have to meet the, the um, cookie scouts and stuff like that? So, like, she used to sit by the table and she used to ask their organizer, can I please have a book? Because her mom used to stay there all day. So she would sit right next to this table where the books and things were being sold and she would be reading over there. So every time that somebody will buy something like a chocolate just to give that $1 donation, for example, I'm just quoting like, but it's not a $1. I'm just telling this story. So they used to give it to her. Imagine this. So now there's something that she'll have to eat. So she'll sit there all day and she'll be eating like all these chocolates and cookies, whatever people are selling it, because she, she happened to be right there. So that was basically her escape, right? And she was saying like that, that day, for example, there was, it was always on Saturday, so she used to go with her mom for that. And um, there was one Saturday, she said that she was so hungry, that she was so hungry, that all she did was spray for food. Now, could you imagine that you pray for food as a child? I mean, our kids are so, how do you say, um, blessed that we have everything. So 
her story was this. So she, she that day she was praying for food. She was, she was going through this thing. She grabbed her book. She was reading it. And the, the day finished. She was there all day. And they went home. Right? And when she got home, I get emotional. <laughs> yes. So when she got home, she said that she used to have a godmother that didn't live in town. Right? And that day in particular, her grand, her godmother happened to visit her. She basically moved back to the town that she was, which was in Rio, and went to visit her. And they were not there because they were at this, whatever, church, right? So the her godmother left her um, an envelope with money. So when they got home and they opened the envelope, it was the mom and the kids. And there was like, according to her, something... Would probably be like five thousand reais at the time. Talking about real Brazilian money. Um, so, like, basically, what she did, her parent, her not her parent, her mother, took that money and they went to the supermarket and bought food and she ate and she was so happy. It was like her prayers were listened and and she had food basically. So why that touched me so much? Okay. Remember the story of the little kid that we do parties for. I'm going to try to, to control myself. Sorry. <laughs> so when we do a little kid, when I watch these kids walk into these parties and we see parties, they're amazing. We see small parties, big parties. The most important thing that we want to do for our kids is to raise that happy memory for the birthdays. Now, imagine a kid that has no food and all she wants is eat do you think she thinks of a cupcake or a cake or a birthday? No, because they don't have time. She was saying, she was telling me, she because I, answer, I, I ended up reaching out to her and thanking her for sharing that story, right? Sorry. <laughs> and uh, she said to me, you have no idea how much my stomach used to hurt. I'm so sorry I'm crying because I can't imagine being a mom and, and being like having a kid that has privilege because I'm not rich. Neither are my friends or we have a normal life, but our kids are, have privilege. Our kids eat every day. Those kids don't eat. And what's my point of this? My point of this is, is and like I told her, like why she inspired me to do this. Uh, her praying for food, it's a necessity, right? For a kid that's five years old and have food, having a cake is a luxury. You understand that? The difference? It's a kid that's starving for food. She just wants food. A kid that has a normal life, that has food in their plate, all they want is their birthday. It's all they want is to, to open the presents and open the gifts. You know, it's a privilege. Our kids have privilege. Some kids out there don't have privilege. So what's my point? Like, oh, do I want to start a food pantry and give? No, that's not what I want. I want you to understand how privileged you are to be able to throw this party for your kids. I want to remind you, like, it doesn't matter if you're going to have a party with just five people. You know, I want to make sure you count every single memory that you can bring for your kid so he can dream of being a better person. Because that's what I believe it does. Like once we are able, because some parents are not, you know, but once when we are able to do this for our children, we're able to, to I at least I believe that, to show them and give them hope. Now think of the kid that doesn't have it. You know, and this is what got me thinking, like, what else can we do towards the party celebrating and making sure I'm like, one thing is helping you all to celebrate because you can afford to, even if you have to do it a small party, even if you have to do it yourself, not hire a decorator, we are lucky that we can do this. We can bring these good memories to our family and friends. So what can we do for those that can't? And I shared this story with two of my friends, right? So basically, they gave me an idea. And this is why this life is not about anything teaching it. It's basically about sharing with you guys the story that happened. 
and、um, sharing you guys this new part of this movement that we created. Because it's not just me; like every single person that I invite here to give their opinion and share. For example, Mondays, like Chris is here, like Gabby's here. Gabby's gonna be here Monday. It's um, it's. Helping me to spread the word. Good morning, Gabby. I'll see you Monday night. So,、um, basically, why this movement and creating these memories are important to helping those kids. Now, why something else this whole week, this whole new thing, turned into something different? Because by sharing the story, this lady telling me this story. And me sharing the story with like two other friends of mine, we came up with an idea that in order for this movement to work, we need to have goals that are a little bit more restricted. It's like even it's funny because even on the live, I said to Chris, like Chris, you're emotional. And she said, No, I'm not emotional. I'm rational. I'm a thinker. And like it made me think about like you know you're right as a movement. One thing is to tell people we need to celebrate, but how can we make this happen? And especially for kids like that, that don't have that a cake, a cupcake, it's a privilege. Okay, the parents truly cannot afford to give them that because they are going to hard times themselves. And right now, they can only provide food and shelter. So, like, how can we do this together as a team for this movement to be stronger? And、uh, two people were willing to help, so like basically that's why I wanted to share this story. That turned out that because of the sad story, and then yes, I'm sorry, I got emotional.、Um, more people got involved, and we came up with this idea together to be more rational. That we're gonna start a campaign. That we are going to try to make a difference in one kid's life a week. We're gonna give them at least cupcakes to celebrate at home with their families, and、uh, so they can sing their happy birthday. Look, to they create that 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 memory, that beautiful memory. So like they're not forgotten. Like so, as a parent, as a mother out there,、um, what movie you working on? It. I'm down to hell. I know you're down. You're a sweetheart, Gabby. Well, basically, Gabby, what I was saying is, um, I heard this really. Sad story on、um, about this girl that was starving as a child, and all she prayed was for food. And I was telling everybody how、um, we're so lucky. Our kids are so lucky. We we have food. We have shelter. That we look our children that privilege look forward for their birthday parties because it's their special day. And as I was sharing this、uh, stories behind what make that special. And、uh, basically, like、um, a friend of mine and I, like, listen. It's so funny how like you start connecting all the dots with everybody that you talk. Like Chris made me think about like how can I be more ra- rational towards making this movement grow and make it real, because that's the difference. Thank you for naming that. <laughs> so、um, we came up with idea that we're gonna start trying to touch one family a week. Why I say one family? Because right now it's coming out of our pockets to help those people. Okay, and、uh, we don't know how can we get help in the future. How this can grow? And the reason why I thought about cupcakes is because maybe we can help two families a week. But one thing is the commitment to help a long term, and another thing is like let's start little and let's see what happens. So this this part of this movement to help celebrate, we we three of us, just three of us, decided, and it's not about just three of us. Like if anybody has a good、um, strategy to make this work, it's more well more than welcome to participate and share like you offered the two of you are offering right now, and we'll be very grateful. And、uh, what we want to do, it's. We want to touch one family at a time. If we can touch one family a week, that's four families that we help that week to help their kids to celebrate. You know, so how can we make this work in a rational way?、Uh, I was thinking that we can、um, spread the word. I'm gonna create some things online that everybody can spread about. Like, hey, if you know as a mother, if you know anybody that's going through a rough time. And their kid's birthday is coming up, and they don't have the money to pay for that cake. That we are here, 
that we're gonna help. All we need is proof that's really his birthday and they're struggling, I guess. I mean, it doesn't have to go crazy about proving that they're struggling, but at least we can't take, for example, away a person that's really not struggling to a person that's struggling, okay? We have to be fair, and sometimes people are not fair. Just some people, unfortunately, are very... Just don't have a heart. That's all I can say. So um, I, I'm not sure yet how are uh, going to be the rules, but basically starting this week... I'm going to start um, announcing it. And I'm going to ask everybody to announce to see if we can start growing a list of these children, of families that selfish. That's right. Selfish. It is true because some people are like this. Oh, I don't have money to spend on a uh, cake for my kid, but they driving like a nice car or they have a nice purse or their nails are done. But, you know, <laughs> and you can't. Order your son or your daughter a cake. Yes, you're, you're being selfish. You know, don't get your nails done and order them. I've seen people like that. Unfortunately, listen, I'm not here to judge people. You know, you do whatever you want. And I'm going to create my own tribe that's going to believe how I believe. And we're going to make this work for the people that deserve and for the kids that need, basically. So part of this movement now, it's going to be, I'm going to have a goal for Let's see, 1,000 families that we can touch in a year, hopefully. You know, so every week, even if we start just every week, one family at a time. If it comes to the point that we can get more help, imagine we're touching so many kids out there with one cake or one cupcake for the birthday. Yes, it not that beautiful? Like we do so many things and I want to keep it simple because it's, it's not about I don't want that kid to feel, oh, somebody else has got more. Because I know, Gabby, for example, you do a lot of beautiful things. I don't want to overdo it in doing things. I can offer more. Can I offer a party? But like the amount of money that I can spend on a party, I can, f I can give more kids that dream of having to sing one cupcake on their birthdays. You understand? So um, that's why I wanted to keep it simple make make one oh that's so cute i love that vivian guys you have to hear vivian she v valley follow her i wish she was in the other string instagram she started she has this beautiful project with kids too that's amazing so anyway so like um what i wanted to do and this is why i brought everybody here and i'm talking and i'm gonna be sharing this and i hope and people don't make fun of me for crying <laughs> Um, but I'm a very emotional person. I, I relive things so much. Anyway, so it's um, to help me grow this movement.